We're here in the ITU studio this morning in Geneva, and I'm with Vijay Mori, who's program coordinator for ITUT, for the uh, Telecommunication Standardization uh, Bureau here at ITU, and he's also chair of the Fiji Security Infrastructure and Trust Working Group. Vijay, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Now we're talking today because we've got the uh, Fiji uh, Security Clinic happening uh, very shortly. Uh, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about uh, security issues and what are the main uh, security issues in digital financial services at the moment? Yes, so the um, digital financial services sector is a complex sector. It's not a, what we say, a vertically integrated sector. It's a very fragmented sector. That is, there's a lot of uh, players in the sector and they are kind of interconnected. So for example, uh, the bank may be using the services of the mobile network operator for uh, communications, and they may also be using services of payment service providers, agents, uh, and other network service providers for efficient uh, delivery of the uh, financial services. In this case, as you can see, the security risk is not only the concern of the bank or of the uh, DFS provider. It also concerns all the other players that are involved in the industry in uh, providing uh, the service. So, as you know, security is only as strong as the weakest link in the chain. So, uh, there is a need to actually coordinate uh, among all the players uh, on the security risk to ensure that these are well uh, managed uh, in the value chain of digital financial services. And um, with new technologies coming into play, like for example with uh, fintech technologies, with the use of artificial intelligence, with the use of big data analytics, there are new risks that are introduced in the service uh, delivery. And these new risks also have to be managed. So as you can see, it's not a process that it's, it's actually a continuous process to keep uh, your security well tuned in line with uh, security best practices and this is becoming more and more complex uh, nowadays and this is why we see that uh, security in digital financial services is challenging because of the need to handle the risk that is uh, introduced in the whole ecosystem. So I, mean, th I think people understand the internet. They understand that if they're going to go on the internet, that there might be risks, that they might be going onto a, a, a mirrored website or something like that. But, but is it much more complicated when you're on your mobile phone? Yeah, exactly, because uh, you need to trust also the device that the user is actually uh, ha handling to perform the transaction. Uh, there is a need to educate users also about device security, how you keep your device secure. Because if your device also is not uh, secured, then there is also the risk that the user is also going to, to lose uh, you know, his, his money or his identity may be uh, used for other purposes. So there are all these risks that have to be uh, managed. So let's talk a little bit about the, the, what are the main outcomes of the Fiji Security Infrastructure and Trust Working Group so far? Yes, so the Security Infrastructure and Trust Working Group uh, was actually set up to uh, study the different uh, security risk uh, of the telecoms infrastructure, which is used to uh, deliver digital financial services. Uh, we also look at um, the uh, security challenges of emerging technologies like distributed ledger technologies, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, big data analytics uh, in the use of, of uh, in providing digital financial services for financial inclusion. Uh, we also look at the um, proliferation of digital Ponzi schemes or unlicensed uh, digital investment schemes how these uh, can be better managed through uh, good coordination between the telco and financial services uh, sector regulators. Uh, one thing which is important in uh, financial services is to ensure that it's the right person who is actually uh, making the transaction and that there is no fraudulent transaction happening. So authentication and uh, digital identity uh, is another aspect that we also examine. So we have a report on 
strong consumer authentication technologies and the application in digital financial services. And of course, we have a recommendation on methodologies as well. So methodologies for managing risk in digital financial services. We call this the report on uh, uh, DFS uh, security assurance framework. And we also have another methodology on uh, measurement of uh, quality of service KPIs for digital financial services. And this is very helpful for telecom regulators to be able to monitor the uh, performance of the mobile uh, network system in delivering uh, digital financial services. So all these reports have been in these areas that I mentioned, these reports, there's about seven reports that have been produced in 2019. Some of them were, also were alre already presented at the Fiji Symposium in January this year. And four of these reports are going to be presented at the Fiji Security Clinic uh, uh, in this week. Uh, and these reports have also led to new standardization work in the uh, ITUT uh, study group. So for example, the report I mentioned on methodology for measurement of uh, quality of service uh, KPIs has led to a new recommendation in ITUT uh, study group 12. And the reports on mitigation of the SS7 uh, vulnerabilities and the report on strong consumer authentication technologies have been presented to ITUT um, study group 11 and 17 uh, respectively. And these reports uh, were also adopted in these two study groups and will lead to new creation of, of new work items. And the remaining reports that I mentioned are also going to be presented next year in the other ITUT study group. So we can see there's a good uptake of the reports from the security infrastructure and, and trust working group in the standardization work that's happening in the ITUT study groups. And also these reports are also being fed to the country implementation teams to support their work as well. Let me go back a little bit on uh, on the ones that you just mentioned. You mentioned Ponzi schemes. Mm -hmm. Perhaps for those who are not in the know, uh, what uh, what are the what are the Ponzi schemes entail? What do they what do they involve? Um, and uh, and how how does how are they in how are they um, seen in the context of digital financial services? Yes, in the context of digital financial services. Um, a Ponzi scheme uh, is actually spread uh, through either SMS or through s social media channels like Facebook or, or Twitter. So basically these are schemes that invite people to invest uh, their money in return for a high rate of return. And ultimately these people never get back uh, their money and they lose a, a lot of money. This has happened in, in some countries, I mean, based on our study in the Security Infrastructure and Trust Working Group, countries like Nigeria, Bangladesh, uh, and also to some extent uh, Kenya uh, where or some countries where people have been victims to these uh, unlicensed uh, digital investment scheme. But the common factor of all these schemes is they originate more or less in the same place. And then w they start up in one country. Then when they are closed down, it's the same actually that opens up in another country. So what we need is a ca actually a kind of coordination at national and international level to basically take action at an early stage before they start spreading. And in this context, uh, the in the Security Infrastructure and Trust Working Group, uh, we are developing uh, what we call uh, measures to help uh, the telecom regulators and the financial services regulators to work together. And at the clinic, uh, we, also have, we have also invited uh, the Interpol to come and give some information on how they investigate uh, these uh, unlicensed digital investment schemes on their side. And to also, uh, we, would, we are planning to have a more, uh, let's say, elaborate session at the next Fiji Symposium in 2020. You mentioned regulators. Topic. What can regulators do to ensure uh, the security of digital financial services? Yes, so that, that's actually a, <laughs> a very good question. And uh, this is something that we are actually studying in the Security Infrastructure and Trust Working Group because uh, we're not talking about one regulator here. We're talking about the uh, in some cases, there's two regulators. In some cases, there's three or four. Uh, so in some countries, the main regulators we're talking about is financial services and telecom regulators. 
Uh, some countries, they have another regulator specifically for data protection. So we need to involve that regulator as well uh, in the discussion. And in some countries, uh, you also have what we call the um, competition uh, commissioner, uh, which also needs to be involved uh, in the discussion. And I think uh, in the working group, what we, we recommend is to have basically good regulatory dialogue. At the end of the day, uh, it's not just the regulators talking to each other, but they also need to involve the players in the sector, listen to their needs and requirements, and come up with a regulation that will create a balance uh, between uh, the security needs of consumers, you know, because consumers need to have the assurance that their rights are actually being uh, protected, and also uh, that there is actually due diligence on the side of the DFS providers and the other players uh, in the industry. And to come up with uh, processes and measures and regulation that can monitor the compliance of, of the uh, DFS providers without putting too much of a burden uh, on the DFS providers at the same time. So it's not an easy task, uh, but it's something that can be achieved through uh, what I would say regulatory dialogue. And uh, in actually the report on uh, SS7 vulnerabilities, we actually propose a template for a memorandum of understanding uh, between the telco regulator and the central bank, how they can work together in addressing specifically the SS7 security issues to clearly delineate the responsibilities of each uh, institution. And uh, they can also work together in establishing uh, minimum security baselines uh, for the sector. Uh, so. Uh, not just it's not just regulation, but I would say in terms of technical guidelines, both regulators could work together in terms of provide uh, establishing minimum security baselines that can be implemented uh, by the DFS uh, providers. And during the clinic, we give a few examples on these. Uh, what we mean by security baselines, uh, for example, uh, in the sessions on the fifth of December. Uh, the app security framework, where we talk about how to implement an app security framework, we'll have someone from a central bank actually coming and explaining how the central bank went about developing an app security framework for DFS providers uh, that want to use, uh, you know, the, the that wants to provide DFS uh, services in, in, in their country. Well, we wish you the very best of luck with uh, with these uh, two, uh, I'm sure, fun-filled days <laughs> of, uh, of uh, exchange of information here with the, the top players in uh, the digital financial services uh, industry and uh, the regulators and, and all the other the, the people gathering here in Geneva. And we uh, look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank it you, was Peter. my pleasure. Thank you.